So Framer Motion just got a pretty sweet update to its layout animations, and I wanna show you exactly how they work by animating this cool little demo of iMessage. So we're starting off with this simple demo here. I can click on messages to remove them, click this plus button to get a little message from your mom that says it's time to come home. And right now there's no animation, but uh, this is a great candidate for adding animation. Uh, as you can see in this app, when we click on this, it's very kind of disorienting. Everything shifts around. So this is a great use case for Framer Motion. So let's come over here, import motion from Framer Motion. And uh, we're just dealing with some React state right here, mapping over these messages. And uh, to start, let's go ahead and add a little bit of animation when a new message enters. So we'll turn this into a motion li, add initial of opacity zero, and an animate of opacity one. And uh, now when we click the plus button, this is a little bit better, you know, at least we can see which message is being added to the DOM. Uh, so that's a pretty good start. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for these exiting animations. And uh, to go ahead and animate these out, we'll say exit and we'll fade these out just the same as we started them fading in. And to use exit, we want to go ahead and wrap this in animate presence just like this. So uh, now if we save this, we see some animation here and we also see the exit animation there. Now I know I went fast. I have a few other videos where I talk about animate presence, but that's just because I wanted to get to this uh, layout feature uh, pretty quickly here. And so when it comes to layout, you know, basically we have some animation going on, but it's weird how the rest of the messages jump. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you know one option we have here is to start off these at height zero, animate them up to height auto, and then go back to height zero on the way out. And uh, if we check this out, we'll see this kind of works uh, when we go ahead and exit and enter these. We're seeing a little bit of distortion here, and uh, this is because height relies on the browser calculating the height of the element, which can be messed up by margin or padding. So usually the culprit is something like this space class, which uh, is gonna add margin to each one of these siblings. So if we were to basically get rid of that, wrap this in a div, let's go ahead and move this flex right here as well. And then we can add something like py0.5 to each one of these. We refresh and uh, that looks a lot nicer. We can see basically the rest of the messages are sliding down. We can go ahead and get rid of this initial mount animation with initial false. So when we refresh, we don't get any animation. And uh, let's also go ahead and scale these. We'll start at, let's say 0.8, go to one and then finish at 0.8, something like that. And then maybe we'll customize the transition. I usually like making the opacity go a little bit faster. And uh, this is starting to look, you know, a little bit nicer. Maybe even 0.1. Whoops, I meant this to say duration of 0.1. So now we can go back to 0.2. And uh, that looks a little bit better. One other little nit here, if I make this uh, two seconds, we'll see this is actually uh, scaling down towards the middle, and that's because of this scale in our flex layout. What we want to do is update the origin to be either left or right, so it kind of scales towards the edges. We could use uh, Tailwind's origin classes here, origin uh, right, we see transform origin right and origin left. But because we're animating the scale with framer motion, we have to use the style tag. So we're going to say style origin X. And we can see right here we have this user property on the message. If it's me, we want it over to the right, which is 100%. Otherwise, we want it to the left, which is 0%. And now, if we kind of take stock of where we are, let's put this back to 0.2 duration. That looks a lot nicer than what we started with. 
So uh, this is pretty cool, but iOS has this really neat effect where the bubbles kind of stagger. I mean, you probably notice this if you ever scroll or a new message comes in. Uh, there's this kind of staggered effect. And right now, we don't really have the ability to stagger these messages, right? Because when I click this, it's the height of the disappearing message that is animating. And everything else is just being redrawn by the browser. But conceptually, there's only one animation that's happening. What I want is there to be n different animations for each message that comes after the removing message. And uh, that way we could customize their delay independently and achieve a stagger effect. So that's what we want to do right now. And the way to do this is to first come here and remove our height animation. So if we come back, we're going to see our scale and, and our fade out and fade in, but everything just kind of snaps. And the other way to achieve this kind of layout animation is using this keyword layout. So check this out. I'm going to drop layout right there, come over and refresh. And uh, look at that. All of the other messages are animating and it's pretty neat. We didn't actually have to animate height or anything like that. Now there are some limitations to layout animations. Uh, they use uh, transform, so they're very performant, but they won't cause the entire document to reflow. So again, if you've seen some of my other videos, a lot of times I do like using height zero to auto if I need other content to be pushed down. But if you're doing something like this in its own pane or an absolutely positioned container, layout animations can be perfect. And the cool thing here is that we now have the ability to animate each one of these independently because they are, in fact, their own animations. So let's come to the transition and the way we can define new transition properties for layouts is by using the layout key. And I could do something like, uh, let's grab the index in the list for this message and we'll just add a duration of I times 0.05. So each one later in the list should get a longer duration. So uh, you can see right there, that's pretty neat. The ones at the bottom are kind of pushing down faster, but we have this kind of staggered effect. So we're starting to see uh, kind of the foundations of that iOS staggering effect. Now you might have noticed there's a bit of a difference between the animations when I add a message and we see this staggering versus when I delete. And uh, when we delete the message, you can see this animate presence, it's kind of holding space and waiting until the removing exit, the unmounting exit is completely unmounted before triggering the layout animations of everything else, uh, the sibling the sibling messages. And it kind of makes for this awkward experience because you'd, you'd want these two to be symmetrical. As soon as we add a message, the layout animation for the siblings is triggered, right? As soon as I click this, they move. But now as soon as I click this, we wait. And until about a week ago, this was actually pretty tricky to solve with Framer Motion. But uh, Matt Perry, the maintainer of the library, just released this sweet new feature. And if we come up to Animate Presence, we can see there's this new mode prop on the Animate Presence. I can uh, autocomplete here and we can see we've got Wait, Sync, and we have this new Pop Layout option right here. So if I save that, come over and refresh, look at that. Now as soon as I click, we're getting layout animations triggered uh, just like when I add a message. So uh, I was pretty stoked. This is why I wanted to make this video and share this with you today. Um, this is an awesome new addition to Animate Presence and it makes using layout animations like in real world settings and, and apps a lot easier and a lot more practical since we have this kind of symmetry here and uh, we can go to town now. So let's, let's come and take a look at our animations and actually finesse them a bit to get them looking a bit nicer. If I refresh and I come up here and remove the very first message, you'll see that these guys are animating really quick. But if I refresh and come down here and remove one of these, these are removing very slow. And again, we're using the index of the message in the messages array to calculate the duration for our layout animation. But really that's not the right logic, right? If I click, let's add a bunch of messages. If I click kind of halfway down here, 
I don't care that this message is like the 12th message in the array. It's actually the first animating message. So it should have the shortest duration and everything after that should be adding that increment of time. But if I click this right now, you'll see it's much slower than if I click these ones up here. So we actually want to derive the subset of messages that are animating. And uh, one easy way to do that is when we remove a message, we'll just set some new state and then we will filter down the messages uh, that are an index higher than the index of the one that we clicked. And so let's go ahead and use some new state. We'll call it last changed index. And we'll start off as null. And in remove message, we can set last change index to the index of this message, which we can get with messages index of message. And now we can get animating messages. This is just going to be messages.slice. This actually returns a new array uh, at the index passed in, which we already have in state. And so now we can come down. This is going to basically be a subset of our messages after whatever we click. And uh, instead of using this index right here, we can use animating messages index of message just like that. So now if we refresh, we see that's fast and look, we see that's fast. So now we can start to tweak this a little bit. And uh, the first thing I want to do is make this type spring. This is going to be more like iOS's effect. And uh, that's way too fast for a spring animation. So we're going to bump this up to 0.4. And uh, now we're getting a little bit closer. We want this to be a little bit more bouncy, so we can say bounce is 0.4. All these things really change the look and feel. And uh, the first message we see, it basically is zero, right? Because it's the first animating message. So it just jumps right up. So let's add a fixed amount to the duration of 0.85 seconds. Look at that. It's pretty cool, right? If we take a look, we see adding messages pushes it down. I think this is a little bit high. Let's bring this down to 0.15. There we go. That feels much better. And uh, look, these are all interruptible. So we can click these while they're still moving. I mean, look how much of a difference that is from what we started out with. And uh, all of this little cool keyword layout, it's going to use these performant uh, GPU accelerated uh, transform transitions. All that complexity is wrapped up for us, taken care of for us by the library. And uh, this is pretty neat. You know, we could even come up here to when we add a message and uh, set the last change index here back to null. And uh, down here for our duration, if we have a last changed index, let's use this. Otherwise, let's just use a simple value of one. And now when we hit plus, everything kind of gets pushed down which I think is actually kind of nice for the addition here. Uh, but when we remove it, you know, we get this staggered effect. So you can go either way with this. You could also just go ahead and set this index to the new one. And all these durations should work just fine in both directions. So uh, if we compare the before right here, what we started with, we'll see just how stiff and actually kind of confusing this interface is when we're adding and removing things. And then we come to the after. And uh, this is looking much better. It's a lot easier to just follow how everything is changing. You, your sense of perspective and um, orientation over uh, the UI as it changes is just much easier, even if a lot of messages come in. It's actually pretty amazing how much animation can help you keep track of things as they change. So uh, I just thought this prop was so cool. I want to make this little video about it and uh, make sure to show you about it. It's basically this new little mode right here, right on Animate Presence called Pop Layout. So big thanks to Matt Perry for adding that to Frame of Motion. I've been waiting for that one. Um, but uh, that's it for this one. 
Uh, hope you have fun playing around with that. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye.